Hey everyone, welcome to Audrey's Corner. I'm your host, Audrey Keller, and this segment will be essentially four minutes of me explaining parts of history in a way that I find interesting. So since this month is Women's History Month, I wanted to do a little deep dive on a generally lesser known but really impactful woman, Nellie Bly, and how she jump-started investigative journalism. So our story, it starts around 1884, 1885, when Nellie Bly was reading the Pittsburgh Dispatch and was appalled because there was an article essentially clowning on women for trying to pursue an education. It was very, know your place. There's a reason we call it dishwash her, like hardy har har article. Nellie was obviously disappointed and wrote a response signing it, Lonely Orphan Girl. The dispatch was like, yo, this writing is pretty tight. We could use someone like her on the staff. And so Nellie joined the staff of the dispatch in 1885. Side note, Nellie's birth name was Elizabeth Jane Cochran, and she was given the pseudonym Nellie Bly at the newspaper. Nellie was feminist from the gate and was writing about topics like divorce and the conditions and factories for women workers, which were poor at the time, which advertisers of the newspaper did not like. So they pulled their funding and Nellie was subsequently demoted to report on Lighter's women's fluff pieces. She was essentially the real life Andy Anderson from How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. So Nellie was like, Screw that, I'm moving to New York because I want to actually make a difference with the stuff I write. So, a determined Nellie Bly took New York by storm and landed a job at the newspaper The New York World in 1887. Her first assignment given to her by the Joseph Pulitzer himself was to do a deep dive and an expose on the mental insane asylum, Blackwell's Island. Nellie jumped at the chance and was like, not only will I write this article, I will feign being crazy to gain admission to the asylum and I'll see what's going on up close and personal. So, obtaining another fake name, Nellie Brown acted out of her mind at the temporary home for females and she got herself sent to Blackwell. Something interesting though, when she was at the insane asylum, she dropped her act and acted normally, which had the opposite effect and made her doctors and nurses believe her crazier. She stayed for 10 days in the asylum where she witnessed and experienced awful neglect and abuse of the patients. And remember, this was the later 1800s, so people were sent to the insane asylums if they were physically ill, if they didn't speak enough English, if they were gay, if they were only slightly mentally ill, etc., etc. Once she got out, her expose was published in a two-part series, the first on October 10, 1887, the second on October 16th the same year. The series was also published in a book, 10 Days in a Madhouse. After this came out, the public was aghast at these conditions that the woman faced, and then came the reforms for the treatment of patients at the asylum and the budget for the Department of Public Charities and Corrections was almost doubled. So not only did Nellie Bly improve the conditions of insane asylums and bring public awareness to the plights of the women inside, but she changed the journalism world forever by really jump-starting this new brand of investigative journalism. Now, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. Nellie Bly, love you, girl. In Audrey's Corner, once again, I'm Audrey Keller. This is my corner. I'll see you next time.